morning hope everyone is well thank you for tuning in since this is my work from home day i am just now coming from the gym it's 703 i only live five minutes away from the gym so that's really convenient so as soon as i get in the house wash my hands take my shower then get on with my day all right we are at the house Time to get this day started. today um check my to-do list which i've been getting bad about that um i need to work on keeping that up when i recorded yesterday there was so many things i talked about and i was like oh i haven't done that <laughs> at 7 30 um at 7.30 every Wednesday, there's a report that comes out and it's an OR report and it lets me know what reports are outstanding from each provider. And this is just for OR cases only. It's not for any regular visits or, you know, HMPs or anything like that. It's strictly for the OR cases. And so I go through there and I have to email each provider and ask them to complete their op notes so what issues can be on there are reports that need to be dictated or reports that need to have the correct attestation so i'll just remind the providers to do that meanwhile i'm emailing my mother good morning so before i start my actual day with work work I like to check my school emails to see if um, I have anything urgent that I could address right before um, I start. And particularly, I want to check because I have a student who is failing and not communicating. And it's the last week and I'm not taking any um, late assignment. Like there are five papers that she's behind on that she has not turned in over the last five weeks. And she hasn't been participating in discussion forums either. So I just wanted to check my email on my iPad because I reached out to the team lead to see if there's anything that I can do to prevent her from failing or can she get an incomplete or something like that. But I don't think she's gonna be able to. Okay, so my first order of business is this OR charge review inventory. And my boss is asking questions already, which she typically doesn't, but this must be the first thing she looks at as well. Let me go ahead and open Epic up right now and see what's going on. Oh, I gotta sign into the VPN first, goodness gracious. So I have one doctor who has two reports outstanding from February and I need to figure out why but I email this provider every single week to have these reports completed let me make sure I emailed last week I did I emailed last week what's interesting is these reports did not show up last week I need to check these two accounts that are currently pending for one of our doctors. And I left the February accounts off because it had appeared that they were complete. 
but now it looks like they're not. My boss is hitting me with emails, boom, 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 with questions. And I always feel like I have to stop what I'm working on to answer the question she just asked previously to answer the new question. But I need to stop stressing myself out and just take care of things one by one. Sometimes emailing these doctors can be frustrating because I'll send a notice about a pending um, documentation. And one time I got a response, as with all my op notes, I will do it as soon as I can. It's like, I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do and doing my due diligence and making sure that you have these complete. Like, I don't even want to email this doctor because that last time he sent me a smart ass remark and I did not appreciate that. So we'll see what his response is this time, but these accounts are pending um, 15 to 30 days. Oh, my mom is off today, didn't realize that. This report though is dictated 619. And that's another thing with these reports, with my, with this OR charge review report, there are cases on there that the provider may have done either, either either the day before or last week and the coders just haven't had the chance to review it and so it's making our list look bad and then my boss is asking me you know why are these accounts still on there and so now i've gotten smart and just put notes by each one i have found that a lot of times i work harder not smarter and so i need to work on better processes for tracking and just really making sure that I notate every single thing, especially sometimes when I feel like I'm being micromanaged. I mean, today has just been boom, boom, boom. I said that earlier, but it still keeps coming. So just making sure I have everything documented, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. I also realized that for the OR case report that I had been working on, I forgot a whole facility. The reason why I forgot a facility is because this one particular facility does not use op time. All the other facilities, they use op time. And so I'm able just to just run one report in Epic. For the other facility that does not use op time, I have to run a report in a different system and then filter on the procedure codes and then count the cases that way. So now I have to figure out how I'm going to integrate that into the report that I get from Epic to make sure I'm counting both primary and secondary. I don't think I can do secondary for the report that I have to, well, yes, I can. I can, I can. I have to work on that. Then I got a notification for um, my calendar. If I have something that's due, I've started using my calendar a lot more I use my calendar to say, call this person or email this person. Well, I have provider dashboards that are due and they're due the 25th and I need to get those done today. So I can email those providers or put them in their box folder. I've got a lot going on today. Ooh, I'm so excited right now. My husband brought me Starbucks. He usually cooks me breakfast, but I just happened to ask for Starbucks this time. I haven't had it in, in about a week. <laughs> okay, I was getting ready to have an attitude because I got a meeting from my boss stating stating that we need to have a meeting on Thursday to review this as your numbers are inconsistent with the DUHS numbers. And then she attached um, three emails looking back. And she was saying my numbers are less than the health system numbers. The health system numbers only include panel one. Please rerun numbers. So looking at the numbers, I thought I included primary. I did not, so I have to do that over. Second, the numbers for the hospital numbers 
match exactly what I have. So again, my data is always consistent. Here is the, here are are the system numbers for the system. We have four five nine three. My number was four five nine four. They include one of the physicians, but she's not an actual surgeon. So I don't know why they include her, but if I take a look at her, interesting that she is included because my numbers are an exact match. All right, so I've had a pretty busy day dialing dating data. So I'm gonna recap the issue that I was just working on. We have a report that is for the entire system, for all the OR cases. The problem with that is it's only primary cases. So my goal was to create a report that shows primary and secondary cases. When I broke my report out, it shows it per month. The system or our case report shows it always fiscal year to date. So it's like a rolling number. It emailed me and said that we need to have a meeting on Thursday to review this as your numbers are inconsistent with the system numbers. Then she attached three emails to go back from fiscal year 21 back to fiscal year 19. She said that my numbers are less than the health systems numbers and only include the first panel, meaning primary. Please rerun the numbers. So my numbers are less because I'm doing cases per month versus the system is doing it year to date. That's easy to fix, that's no problem. But another issue is the system included a physiatrist and the physiatrist has done cases in the OR, but because she's not a surgeon, I never included her in my reports. The reports, we always wanna look at the surgeon. So in addition to that, we have fellows that are that also can do a case as a primary. And then on top of that, we have new physicians. The system did not report or the system did not include the new physicians or the fellow um, in their primary count for the cases. So it's twofold. I told my boss that I included secondary and primary when really I only included primary. So that's wrong on my part. Two, if we just look at the data and the physicians that's included, for one, my numbers actually did tie out to the system, although there was a mismatch in physicians. So if she just would have tallied that up, she would have seen I was spot on. Two, it's so inconsistent because the system did not include providers that I included. So again, I stand firm that every time I submit data, it's the correct data. I am pulling, I am making sure that I pull everything. Um, again, the only physician that I did not include was the physiatrist and that's because she's not a surgeon. So even if I include her in, there's still some inconsistency. So it's going to be really interesting when we meet tomorrow. And what I'm going to do is break down the providers for this fiscal year that were not included and look at the variances that way. Because the physician, the physiatrist that I did not include had 165 cases. So I'm hoping that when I run cases for the providers that they did not include, that it equals out to be around 165 cases. 
So I hope that makes sense, but that's what I've been working on. I was really irritated at first, but I'm like, just take my time, compare the actual data number to number, and then see what I come up with. I don't know what this little braid is doing. So that's what I've been doing. And I also need to call a physician office to see if I can get a hold of their coder or billing team because there are times, and I have not come across this often, I think this is my second time coming across this, that a surgeon from an outside clinic, outside of the system that doesn't belong to our health system, a surgeon at a clinic will come over and do a surgery at our hospital or they'll do a co-surgery. Well, our physicians, the physicians are not agreeing to putting in an attestation saying that it was a co-surgery. And it's really tricky because when you look at the definition of a co-surgery, for a case to be... <clears throat> So for a case to be considered a co-surgery, both surgeons would need to perform parts of the same procedure simultaneously. Both doctors are refusing to add a co-surgery attestation so, the, uh, right, um, so that the right modifier can be appended to the code. The modifier would be 62. So with that said, I emailed the compliance specialist to get her thoughts. And what she said was that if the physicians perform separate parts alone, they both documented distinct portions of one procedure. The overall operative session would be reported with the same CPT code, which would make this a co-surgery. And then that would require the attestation. So because the surgeon is at another clinic, I cannot see how he billed um, what the code selection was, I'm not sure at all. So my next item to do is to contact their office to see if I can get a hold of somebody from billing and then go from there. Access to Optum Encoder Pro now. This is amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. All the tools that are associated with this. I can, oh wow. I, and I remember using this. And of course, I did not end this day in my life. So again, thank you for tuning in. I feel like I dropped a lot of detail and knowledge this time. So go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you like. And until next time. Thank you.